Hello there, welcome to a new series for the Real Lost Boss YouTube channel. Worth the calories, thumbs up or thumbs down. So the idea of this came about last week. A follower of mine, David, commented saying, uh, idea for a new sort of bit of content for YouTube. Uh, and he referred back to something I did last Christmas, which was Christmas calories, worth it or not. Calories are king when it comes to a weight loss journey, but they are also really, really precious. So we don't want to waste them. So last Christmas I went round and I tried a few things like new items on the Christmas McDonald's menu, the Christmas tree brownie at Starbucks, and basically, from my own honest opinion, were the items I tried worth the calories or not? Um, and yeah, David sort of said, why don't you do a little series like that on YouTube with different foods? And I thought, great idea, because I love eating food, I like reviewing food. I like recommending food. So I've been thinking about it over the last few days. And this is kind of what I have come up with. So uh, calories, worth the calories, thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, and basically, I'm going to treat it not as a pure food review sort of thing. It's going to be a bit of food recommendation stroke food review. So if it's a food that I eat on a regular basis in my diet or I have quite a few times or stuff that I might have had in the past that I like, then that's a food recommendation. But anything new onto the market that I try, that's going to be more of a food review, if that makes sense. And basically, I'm going to kind of split food into two categories. Category one is like everyday diet food. There's no such thing as diet food. What I mean by everyday diet food is things that you can eat on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you follow me, um, you should understand what my philosophies are around eating. So I track my calories, energy in, energy out for fat loss. Uh, and I have a daily average amount of calories. Uh, and some days I eat below that. And some days I eat above that with the calories I've saved on the days I eat below. Uh, and it gives you a lot more flexibility and freedom around your eating, certainly on days where you want a few more calories, like at a weekend. So what I class as everyday kind of diet food is what I would probably eat Monday to Friday, where I'm trying to be a lot more controlled with my calories. Um, and I'm trying to bank some calories to give myself a bit more food freedom at the weekends. Uh, so that's kind of, yeah, what I mean by everyday diet food. Uh, and then the other category is treats. So that's what I class the weekend for, is to have some treats. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not set in stone, it's not concrete, but that's kind of the way things work. And don't get me wrong, I don't mean my entire weekend is made up of treats, but yeah, at the weekend, because I've got a few extra calories, that is where I would have more calorie dense foods as it were like a takeaway or um a bit of fast food like a mcdonald's or going out for a meal or you know even if we're at home that's when we might have something more like you know a new takeaway pizza dupe from aldi rather than during the week where it's like i say yeah, a bit more calorie controlled so everyday diet food what am i going to be looking for to you know give it a thumbs up it's, there's a few different rules with it, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm going to be looking at value for calories. So what's the portion size going to be like? So are you getting a uh, bang for your calorie book, as I like to call it? Also, I'm going to look at some health markers as well. So uh, things like protein and fiber that obviously help to fill us up on a weight loss journey. But obviously, um, fiber is very good for our gut health. Um, looking at kind of things that could be detrimental to our health if overconsumed. Something is only detrimental to our health if it's overconsumed. But certain foods are a lot easier to overconsume than others, like saturated fats and sugars and stuff like that. So I'll have a little look at those. Um, I'll also be looking at things like portion control. So sometimes we might want a little bit of something tasty, but during the week, because we're not trying to consume too many calories. So there's a few different, like I say, boundaries, Boundaries is not the right word. You, you know what I'm getting at. But of course, taste is also very, very important. What we eat should taste good. Whatever we eat, whether it's everyday diet food or treats. And when it comes to treats, uh, treats for me is just about taste. 
it is just about taste. I will look a little bit at bang for your calorie book. So if it's extremely calorie dense, it's going to need to taste absolutely amazing for it to get a thumb up. Uh, thumbs down. Yeah, stuff that, yeah, basically I don't feel is, is worth spending calories on. Now, obviously, if I'm doing food recommendations, they're pretty much always going to be a thumbs up because it's stuff I've eaten before. The food reviews are where you're going to get the ups or the downs. Does that kind of make sense? I hope so. Uh, anyway, as always, I'll put all that in the description the best I can so you kind of know what I'm talking about. So without further ado, um, let's crack on. So literally, because this is just an introduction and it's just, you know, kind of a bit of a tester for me for a format. I've literally just had a mooch around my kitchen to see some foods that are in my fridge. And this is going to be like a food kind of recommendation thing. But, you know, everything I recommend is is something that is going to be tasty, that, yeah, anyone can fit into their daily calorie allowance. Certainly, if you've had me calculate your calories for you, uh, you'll be able to fit it into your daily calorie allowance. Or, like I say, it could be a treat. Okay, first of all, uh, quick... A quick and easy breakfast option. A lot of people struggle for time. They're on the go. Um, is these little badges. These have been out in Aldi for ages, but I do have them in my fridge as a go-to option. They tend to have a really good date on them, so I'll just always grab a couple and stick them in my fridge. Uh, in terms of calories, they're 197 calories for 22 grams of uh, protein. Um, Sugar-wise, the sugar in them tends to just be uh, lactose. So something people don't really go into a lot when they look at sugar, they just go, it's sugar. There is a difference between lactose, fructose, and free sugars, which is like table sugar that's added to food. They all have different health markers and so on and so forth. Uh, so for me personally, this is, um, yeah, it's just a really good option. Quick, convenient, good hit of protein. It's going to fill you up. Now, this type of yogurt is like a low-fat, soft cheese type of yogurt. Very, very thick. And I know everyone's not a massive fan of that. What you need to do with any protein yogurt like this is whip it up give it a really good mix up and the more you give it a whip up the creamier it will get and then obviously you've got your little pot of granola for a bit of texture and a bit of crunch to go on top these for me 22 yeah grams of protein for 197 calories for a quick and easy breakfast option is definitely a thumbs up Number two is another Aldi product. I absolutely love these. I love a chicken Kiev. And a lot of the time, we have a very unhealthy association with food. Uh, and especially with something like a chicken Kiev, because it's got garlic and butter in it. <gasps> Can't eat butter while on a weight loss journey. Yes, you can. It's all about calories in, calories out. Obviously, too much saturated fat would be detrimental to our health. And butter is a saturated fat, and so on and so forth. But these... I absolutely love them. They're 387 calories, and they are a decent size. They're a good portion. Um, 33 grams of protein for 387 calories is really, really good as well. Um, saturated fat-wise, 6 grams, so not terrible at all. And something I love uh, about these is, I love having them, as you can see in the picture there, with just some boiled new potatoes. Potatoes, super good for us. Very, very filling um, and pretty damn cost effective. And the calories in these includes all the butter that generally oozes out when you cook a Kiev. So what I tend to do is the butter that's left in the bottom of the tray, I pour over the new potatoes. So obviously, if you're doing it for two, split the butter between two of you. And you don't need to add any extra calories in because it's already included. So you basically get garlic buttered new potatoes, a lovely chicken Kiev, and these are really good. And then chuck some greens in, some peas, asparagus, broccoli, or a side salad or something like that. Really great. Really great. Really tasty for a tea. Um, yeah, they are definitely as a protein option for a main meal, a thumbs up.
Okay, next one is a curly whirly. You might be like, what? You're recommending me to eat chocolate, Neil? Yes. Why? Over restriction leads to cravings going through the roof. And even during the week, so this is every, these are all everyday diet foods that I'm showing you in this video. Even during the week, when you're trying to control your calories, you might get a little bit of a sweet craving. And these are just a superb option. They are 98 calories, so really good portion control. Um, and what I love about Curly Whirly is, stick it in the fridge. You stick it in the fridge, it goes rock hard. And because it's toffee, obviously if you've got fillings or not great teeth, that might not be an option for you. But because it's toffee, uh, it goes rock hard. It's chewy. It lasts longer. <laughs> it's, it's such a simple concept, but it will take you longer to eat. So this is the same amount of calories as a Freddo, and I love a Freddo, don't get me wrong, but a Freddo's gone in one mouthful, Well, as, whereas this will give you, you know, a minute or two of enjoyment. Now, a lot of people go, that won't even touch the size. It's one of the most annoying things when people say that. You should not be eating crisps, you should not be eating chocolate because you are hungry, right? This is a little sweet treat on an evening, on the sofa, portion control that, yeah, is going to last a little bit. So I highly recommend a Curly Whirly. Get some of these in your cupboard. If you are struggling with self-control, buy them on the day. It's one of the big recommendations I give, certainly for my clients at the start of their journey. If you can't have it in the house because you'll eat it, buy it on the day you're going to eat it. So like Wednesday night's treat night, I like a little bit of chocolate in front of the telly, Grab one on the way home from your from your local shop. But curly whirlies are a thumbs up. Next, to go with a bit of chocolate, crisps. Now, these might not be for everyone, but I absolutely love um, scampi fries. You know, like, you used to get the pubs off the card. It's, it's a bit nostalgic. Go to the pub with me, dad, I get a Coke and a bag of scampi fries. Absolutely love them. Um, and last year... They had these in Aldi, you know, like the weird branded section where you just get the most random, different, not random brands, but, you know, they'll have some Seabrooks there and some Walkers there. It's not like a, a main sort of thing. Well, they had these little uh, little badges. I'd never seen them before. They might have been around for absolutely ages. I have no idea. But basically, these are uh, open shores, scampi fries, but... Normal scampi fries are like 135 calories a bag. These are 80 and they are absolutely delicious. Now, I've not seen them in out. I just saw them once, gone. Home bargains. These are home bargains. So, you know, nighttime on the couch, you fancy a little bit of crisp and chocolate, portion control crisp, portion control chocolate. Yeah, not the biggest portion in the world, but you're not eating these because you are hungry. You're eating these because fancy some crisps. I fancy some chocolate and there's nothing wrong with that. So combined with the Curly Whirly, 180 calories for some crisps and chocolate. That's not bad at all. And yeah, if you do like scampi fries, these, honestly, I absolutely love them. Definitely for 80 calories a bag, thumbs up. And last but by no means least for this little introductory video, these are all food recommendations and these are all everyday diet recommendations. I am not saying all these foods are super healthy. I'm not, but they are in terms of calories. They are certainly foods that you can fit into your overall diet. Remember, there's no such thing as unhealthy foods. It's about unhealthy overall diets that's going to be an issue. Now, we have a rule in this house. You can't have pasta without garlic bread. It just goes it's like peas and carrots. They go hand in hand. Obviously, pasta is not the lowest calorie of dishes. At times, you can make some pretty damn decent fairly good portion control pasta and there's a good few in uh, in my e-cookbooks that I've brought out but uh, again if that's not the lowest calorie thing then garlic bread isn't always the lowest calorie thing either but these mini cheese and garlic pizza breads from Aldi again just fantastic portion control if you're someone that if you're going to cook a full garlic if I cook a full garlic bread I'm going to eat it right um so yeah these are absolutely uh, brilliant 206 calories for half of one of these so if i'm cooking for me and the wife um we'll have half each and anyone again can fit 
200 calories worth of garlic bread in with a pasta dish. It might be on might be on a slightly more higher calorie day, or if you're going to have a pasta dish at night time with some garlic bread, you just need to understand the calories of that dish, and then you might have a little bit less for breakfast, a little bit less for lunch. But again, anyone should be able to fit in a little bit of garlic bread with their pasta. And like I say, it's a law in this house. So these Carlos takeaway mini cheese and garlic pizza breads, they taste amazing. But like I say, the big thing is portion control. Cook one of them. They're absolutely lovely. You're then not, you know, running the risk of eating a thousand calories worth of garlic bread. These I highly recommend. Um, yeah, so next time you have a pasta dish, remember that rule, you need to have a bit of garlic bread with it. And that bit of garlic bread, if it's a slightly lower calorie day where you're trying to bank, get one of these, split it in half. Uh, I have had these, by the way, where I've just cut it in half, cooked it and put the other half in the fridge and had it a few days later. So you don't have to, you know, if you're not sharing it with someone, that's absolutely fine. But yeah, half one of these is 200 calories, brilliant portion control, garlic bread to have with pasta. And this is my last thumbs up of the video. And there we go, guys. That's kind of a brief introduction to a new little series. Now, they were, of course, all food recommendations. Uh, I'm going to try and mix it up. So any products I've not tried before that I see, I will do as a food review. Likewise, any new products that I see coming to market, again, they'll be more of a food review basis than a recommendation. So it's going to be a mix of all sorts, really. Um, and yeah, you're not going to see many weight loss coaches promoting eating chicken, Kiev's garlic bread, Chris and Curly Whirlies. Um, and I'm not saying they're the healthiest foods in the world, but they can all be built into an overall healthy diet. And a lot of people forget a very important factor about being consistent with sticking to a diet. And that is food needs to taste good. If your diet is boring and bland, you're not going to stick to it anywhere near long enough to have a successful weight loss journey. So I hope there's a little bit of food for thought there, a little bit of inspiration maybe. Like I say, please let me know in the comments what you think. If you want me to continue with a series like this, if you think it's going to be helpful for you on your journey. Um, and yeah, there we go. An introduction to a new little series, hopefully, going forward. Uh, and until I see you next time, of course, you know what you're going to do? You're going to boss your weight loss.